Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this 2014 Mercedes-Benz E350 4Matic. So this is the obviously the all-wheel drive Mercedes E-Class. We have the sedan here today. Let's go take a look at the exterior of the car. So this Mercedes-Benz E-Class was the first year of the facelift for the W212 generation. So this is the fourth generation of the Mercedes-Benz E-Class. So as you can see here on this front end, we have LED headlights that are quite nice. We also have this beautiful Mercedes-Benz logo to crown the front of the hood. So over here you can see we have 17 inch alloy rims. Honestly, I felt like this car deserved the 18s at least. Feels like we have a little too much tire here, but this E-Class is still a pretty nice side profile. Over here in the back, you can see we also have these gorgeous LED taillights. These are actually probably one of my favorite Mercedes taillights. They just look so cool. They have these little lines in them. Just tons and tons of detail there. So while we're back here, let's take a look at the trunk. We have rear folding seats in this E-Class, which was actually an option, which is funny. Um, and then we also have some cargo nets here on the side have our mats here and a compact spare tire. So hopping into this back seat, we have plenty of room. It's not as plush back here as that S-Class that we reviewed a few weeks back, but it's quite luxurious in this back seat. As you can see, we have a black interior to this car as well as a black exterior. So, you know, we kind of have a incognito E-Class and just kind of provide some gorgeous, luxurious, interior especially with the wood trim that we got in this interior and so in these back seats i probably have about four inches of headroom about five inches of legroom between me sitting behind myself and i'm sorry i'm fighting a mosquito in here and so we also have vents we have a 12 volt plug-in charger and a little coin pouch here and then we have pouches behind each seat as well as speakers back here so this 2014 Mercedes-Benz E-Class features the naturally aspirated 3.5 liter V6. It makes 302 horsepower, 273 pound-feet of torque. The exhaust note is pretty good for a V6. I would say that it's still quite quiet in here, which is what most E-Class owners are going to want. And the six-speed automatic that is paired to this engine is pretty good as well. So the fourth generation E-Class was offered in a sedan, a coupe, and a convertible. Of course, we have the sedan here. This model is weighted at just below 4,000 pounds. So this specific E-Class offered by First International Auto Group here in Merrimack, New Hampshire, has 103,000 miles on it. And for the most part, there isn't much wear and tear on this car. I will say that the steering wheel buttons and one of the buttons on the that controls the windows has worn a little bit, but other than that, this car is in really great shape. I'd say the highlight of showing it in good shape is these wonderful seats. They still have their correct form, like they're not blown out or anything. They're actually really comfortable to sit in. Overall, the ride quality isn't as sound as the S-Class, but it's also quite luxurious compared to the C-Class car. So it's funny that this is kind of the middle ground between those two cars. This E-Class has two available drive modes, one being Eco, one being Sport. Right now I'm in Sport, but I honestly don't feel like it's necessary. I would probably just leave this car in Eco for the most part because, you know, you only get about 21 miles per gallon city, 30 highway. So you kind of want to be saving on that gasoline. So these leather seats are also heated and both the front passenger and the driver have memory seating. So you can get in and they have three settings each. So you can just press the number that you are and have your proper adjustments to your seat, which is nice. As far as visibility, this car has quite a large greenhouse. My favorite part is looking through this front windshield here where we see our wonderful Mercedes logo. It just kind of makes you feel like you're an in an expensive car because of course you are. 
So let's punch it and see this car work. So as you can tell, you know, the power is quite linear and this being the 4Matic, you can tell that all that 302 horsepower is really getting to the wheels for the most part. It's not the most exhilarating car to be in. Of course, you know, this is a more luxury focused sedan. So this specific E-Class has the premium package one, which offers the Harman Kardon speakers, the rear view camera. We also have a wonderful panoramic sunroof, which I really enjoy. We also have keyless entry. We don't have keyless start though. So if you don't have keyless entry and keyless start, I feel like it doesn't matter to only have one because you end up having to take your key out anyways, but not really that important. So on this drive, we have our infotainment screen off, but this car also comes with navigation, which is part of that premium package. And of course, this car being 10 years old, navigation is probably quite useless. We don't have Apple CarPlay in this model because of the age, but of course we do have Bluetooth. And so you can hook up your phone, maybe get a mount that mounts to the vent or the dash, and you'll be able to get around just fine in this E-Class. So regarding gauge clusters, we have a pretty nice view here. We have a analog dash with the tiny little screen in the middle of the speedometer. And so it has a nice balance between digital and analog, which I like. So testing this car out on the worst road in Merrimack, New Hampshire, it handles it pretty well. It's not as soft as far as spring rate and suspension goes. Uh, than the S-Class we drove, but it competes pretty well. So popping this car into reverse, as you can see here, we have our backup camera. Obviously not very high resolution, but it gets the job done. So I really like that although this is a luxury sedan, they still provide that, uh, you know, that exhaust note, that engine noise, and it really kind of translates into the cabin and provides you with, you know, a little bit of a sporty feel. So switching this car into Eco, you're going to see the transmission behave just a little bit differently, kind of trying to keep this car in a lower gear to improve fuel economy. So as far as interior impressions, it's a very nice place to be. Obviously, this car having over 100,000 miles on it, you see some wear and tear. But overall, you know, the seats are quite comfortable. There's basically no, like no outside sound coming in into the interior. And overall, the ride is quite smooth. And I think the wood trim and the analog clock is a nice touch in this car. Overall, regarding the car's size, I feel like this is the nice spot between, you know, if you don't want the S-Class because it's too big and you don't want the C-Class because it's too small for you, I think this is just the right car. So one thing I found interesting with the drive modes though is there's no normal mode. You either are in Eco or you're in Sport. And so of course, most of the time, people probably just leave this car in Eco because I feel like it's more well behaved you know it's not hanging on to gears to give you a more sporty driving experience because a lot of people who buy e-classes really don't want that that's not what they're looking for if they're looking for sporty driving you know they'd probably go buy a c63 amg so overall this 2014 mercedes-benz e350 is a nice place to be i think comparing it to the audi a6 i drove on the channel a few weeks back I would still opt for that car. I just think that I prefer that one because I feel like the interior touch points were just a little more luxurious. I felt like that engine and transmission combo were a little more fun. Um, but overall, I think they're both really nice cars. And so if you're looking for this E-Class in particular or any other pre-owned luxury cars, feel free to check out First International Auto Group. They're a great dealership to work with. With that being said, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.